Hi there, Aaron Dunn here from Smarter SMSF. In this video, we're going to go through the release of the pension commencement document inside Simple Fund 360. Now, this is our most used document across the Smarter SMSF platform. So we're excited to now deliver what is version one of our pension commencement document. And what I mean by pen, uh, version one is that we have a range of further integrations that we are currently working through with BGL to make this a truly embedded integration inside Simple Fund 360. But first and foremost, you're going to be able to utilize some of the basic features from the API to ensure that you can produce a range of pension documents that include an account-based pension, transition to retirement income stream, and a death benefit pension. All of these come out of this one order form, subject to a range of questions that are answered throughout the form. So you'll see here as we generate the document, you'll see the member request, trustee resolutions, notification, and the product disclosure statement. We do have some very specific features inside of our pension document that we'll also work through that are specifically related to the Smarter SMSF deed. But if you don't use our Smarter SMSF deed, which we of course encourage you to do so, you can also create a generic set of pension documents out of this pack as well. So what we're going to do is look up the Smith SMSF that you can see here, and it will pre-fill a lot of the basic information that we have inside Simple Fund 360. A tip always here with the fund address, just go to the end of it, press space, then generate that particular address using our Addressify plugin. The reason for that then is, is as you work down the screen, when you have things like the trustee meeting address, you can see that just from the drop menu there. So both in the corporate registered address and the trustee meeting address, I'm just going to choose that for simplicity. We have then our directors of the trustee company up there. We nominate who our chairman is. We'll nominate who's receiving that benefit and again, we can, we'll can start to improve on some of this information coming through in the near future in further updates to make sure that we are integrating all of this information into the ordering form to further streamline this process. So again, we'll choose the address there that you can see. And as we move on now, we're starting to pick up a lot of the specific information in respect to the type of pension. So first one here is whether it's as a result of a death benefit. So this is not for reversionary pensions. We do have different documentation in respect to that, but this is where a person is starting a pension with a particular death benefit. So non-reversionary in that respect. But in this instance, we'll say no, we'll put in our particular start date, we'll say it's the 1st of July, 2020. And you can see here, it's then automatically created and calculated the date. So what this means is that we're going to only here pay an account-based pension because the member has already met the condition of release of attaining age 65. So if that date was much less, uh, then we would have a drop menu that would come here to allow you to choose between a transition to retirement income stream or an account-based pension, and then allow the user to choose the type of condition of release that may also align to that. So then what we'll need to do is, again, we'll just put in some information in respect to the components. Once again, we're working with BGL to really improve on this information, to feed this information into the form um, and really streamline this overall process with you. Interestingly, you won't be able to include information into the preserved and restricted items because the member has already reached age 70. So that condition of release has unrestricted that money. So just some smarts in there to make sure that you are producing the right type of pension documents. The other thing here, you can then choose whether the benefit is starting with the entire balance. So you can see there would be 200,000, or if it's no, then you can put in a lower figure. So if we just, for the sake of this example, put in 150,000 and what you will see is the proportions still remain the same in accordance with the superannuation laws, but we now have a different minimum and maximum based upon that purchase price. And once again, the tooltip here outlines for you the fact that we've applied a reduced 
minimum for this financial year. So that reduced minimum due to the economic impact of the coronavirus applies for both the 2019, 20 and 2020, 2021 financial years. So we then can continue on the level of pension that they're going to take. Well, so we'll assume at least the minimum here. Um, you can choose the timings. So a lot of people do choose the trustee's discretion. Um, and then we have some decisions to be made whether it's being paid under the Smarter SMSF deed or not. So again, if you choose no here, it will produce a range of default documents and not incorporate some of the things that I'll be talking to you shortly with. But if it is, one of the key things here is that it becomes a special rule of the fund. Now, what that means is that the these documents, in essence, annex themselves to the trustee. So they become rules to the deed ordinarily. And this is set out within rule three of the SMSF trust deed that allows for things such as the pension documents to become a special rule of the fund. And the reason why this is important is because it will allow for items in the future, those that do become special rules, to be altered if you choose to do so. And a really good example of that is the fact that you could change what is a reversionary pension to maybe non-reversionary or vice versa without actually having to stop and recommence that income stream. We then look at the requirements for the pension, the powers to be able to pay that. Again, the tool tip here will tell you what that is in the Smarter SMSF deed. Otherwise, you'll go and have to find that out in the deed that you actually use. And then we go and fill out the remaining pieces of information here around both the reversionary beneficiary. So if we have a reversionary, we can include that information in here. Again, we will be working with BGL as we start to um, evolve this further to be able to pull in reversionary details into this form. So at this point, I'll just select no. Uh, and then we have also this concept of a paramount document, something that we introduced when the reforms came in on the 1st of July 2017, that really in accordance with the special rule of the fund, will set aside this document as being higher or, or or more precedent or paramount over any other document that would purport to create a conflict with it. So the most common ones would be, for example, if we have a reversionary beneficiary and we have a binding death benefit nomination. So if it is unclear by virtue of the deed or any decision, by operation of the uh, here selecting that this, this is the paramount document, it would mean that any uh, documentation that has been paid prior or made prior to this would become ineffective because this document has been created as the paramount document here. So what I'm going to do is I'll select yes in this instance, and then we click on next, which will ask us some decisions around whether we are setting aside any specific assets to support the income stream. So if we're pulling between say a husband and wife here, we can just click no, and then it will allow us to finally simply review all the details of the order. Importantly, you will receive an email with the confirmation of all this. And then once you, you're satisfied with this information, you can simply submit this order. So if you have a subscription, um, you will see it as you see on the screen here at the moment. Um, you can simply click the order now if you're buying this on a pay as you go basis, what you would do here is you would simply see a credit card. You need to put in the payment details and then submit the order at that point in time. So I'll just click order now. It's only going to take a couple of minutes for this order to now generate. And I'll pause the video here and come back and show you what that completed order actually looks like. Okay, so we've now got our completed order here. So it's available from the completed orders area or you will get this as an email. So as we've mentioned, we had this as a purchase price for 150,000 for John. Um, we do do some very specific things within this documentation. You'll see on the front at the very first paragraph, we are hereby confirming the previous oral request of the members. So rather than having to backdate documentation, we can simply sign this documentation as and when it occurs, confirming an initial intention of the member that they wish to start this pension. We cover off all the conditions of release. Uh, we cover off the obligations around transfer balance account reporting, the requirements around reversionaries, asset segregation, the paramount document, and all those things that we spoke about earlier. We then have our trustee resolution that confirms a lot of this information, the powers to pay the pension, 
uh, and we have our member components in total, how that then translates into the pension proportions and then also formulate the purchase price. And as we stated before, we have our minimums that apply and of course the 50% reduction that operates here in this specific circumstance. So our investment strategy requirement, uh, we also cover that off the transfer balance account reporting and then the series of resolutions that make up all the steps that are necessary for the formulation of this pension starting. And as I mentioned earlier on, the fact that it becomes a special rule of the fund. And then finally, our notification that goes back to the member in respect to the commencement of this income stream of which the member acknowledges that. And then we have our product disclosure statement that sets out all of the key features and requirements around how this pension is to be paid, including the temporary minimum pension reductions as well. So if you've got any other further questions that you'd like to ask in respect to our pension commencement document, please feel free to get in contact with us at team at smartrsmsf.com.